Usman Namhan, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, was a champion of Islamic tradition in the Arab world. He wrote the best encyclopedia on the miracles of the Prophet. This is in two volumes. I'm quoting from this. He mentioned the story of the Mu'jizat of the Prophet and Ibn Asakir in his Tariq, Tariq Dimash, in his history of Damascus. He mentioned this narration. And Al Mustafraf also quotes this narration. Bishwas Zunu mentions that this is a reliable narration. I want to clarify this before I narrate this narration. There was a king in Yemen, his name was Tubba. His name was? Tubba. And there were several Tubba kings in Yemen. This was the first Tubba king who came from an area called Himya. This is why they called him Tubba Abbal Himyari. Tubba Abbal Himyari. He was a king of Yemen. He came 1,000 years when? Before our Prophet 1,000 years prior to our beloved Habib al Mustafa. And he, his reign was over seven different lands. He had seven countries under his supremacy and his control. He was the king of seven lands, a thousand years before our Prophet Once he left Yemen, wanting to visit all of the seven lands, wanting to visit all of the seven lands, he wanted to make a tour of his kingdom. So he set out and he had the 12,000 physician doctors and rabbis, scholars, scholars of the Jewish scriptures. 12,000 scholars of the Jewish scriptures and physicians and doctors traveled with him on this tour of his kingdom. He had with him over 130,000 horsemen that were riding horses. A huge army of people accompanied Tubba, him being the king, who was visiting his kingdom. He had 113,000 people walking with him. 130,000 on horses, 113,000 on foot, and 12,000 doctors and scholars of the Jewish scriptures. They were traveling with the king to Bahimiri. Wherever they went, they were received with warmth. Imagine two, three hundred thousand people coming with the king. So wherever he went, he was received with great love, great warmth and affection. During this tour of his, he entered Makkah Mu'azzama. He entered the city of Makkah al a thousand years before the Prophet was born. When he entered the city of Makkah, the people of Makkah did not give him a reception. They did not show him the respect that other people have shown him in other lands. The people of Makkah did not bother to go out into the streets and welcome him. So he was a king. And he got furious and he got angry. He called one of his wise men and he said, How come that we have come to this city? And nobody, nobody has come out to welcome us. Nobody has given us a warm reception. Nobody has shown us the respect that we witnessed and saw in the other lands that we entered. Why is it that the people of this land have not come to respect us? And the wise man replied, He said, O Tuba Hamiri, this land contains Baytullah. These people are the custodians of the Kaaba. These people are the servants of a house. Its foundations were laid by Hazrat Adam and Islam, and its walls were built by Hazrat Ibrahim and Ismail. There is a house in this land, and the custodians of this land are respected. They are referred. They are honorable gentlemen. The people of this land, the whole world comes to these people once a year to perform the Hajj. They come here on the pilgrimage before Prophet Wasallam. The whole world comes here. These people are spoiled. They don't respect anyone because they have all the respect. They have the Kaaba with them. They are the custodians of the Kaaba. This is why they didn't bother to come out and respect you because the whole world respects them. He was a king. So he got furious. And he made an intention, an ill intention, in his heart. When he got angry, he said, 
I shall not leave the city of Mecca until I do not destroy the Kaaba. Out of anger and animosity and hatred, because he was not received the way he expected to be received in Mecca. So he had an ill intention to destroy the Kaaba, to kill the men of Mecca, to take the women of the people of Mecca and to ruin the city of Mecca. Before he leaves the city of Mecca, he had intended to do this. That very day, the king made this intention to destroy the Kaaba. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala punished him. He was afflicted with a disease, afflicted with a sickness. Pus came out of his eyes. Pus flew from his nose, from his ears, until he became severely sick. He called the doctors and physicians that were with him on this journey. They all attended. They checked his pulse, heartbeat. They all said, your heartbeat and pulse is perfectly fine. So he called. Now after he had been checked by the doctors and the physicians, the experts among them, the experts, he called one of the scholars of the Jewish scriptures. He called a scholar from the Jewish tradition. He called one of the scholars that were with him on this journey to check him. The scholar came and he said, This is not a sickness. This is a punishment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Tell me the truth. There is nobody other than me and you in this room. There is no one other than me and you. To Bahimiri, tell me the truth. The people of Makkah did not give you the respect that you expected from them. Did you make any ill intention in the city? Tell me, Nubba. Tell me what you have in your heart. And Duba Himiri said, yes. In my heart, I made an intention that I will destroy the Kaaba and destroy the people of Makkah and kill its men and take its women. Allah, Allah. So you know what this Jewish rabbi and scholar said to him? He said, Duba, two things you need to do. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will heal you and cure you. Allah. There are two things that you have to do. The first thing is, you need to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and make Duba. You need to change your intention and repent. Ask Allah for forgiveness. And the second thing you need to do is you need to vow to give the people of Makkah charity before you leave the city of Makkah. Continue listening, the story is beautiful. So the king, right away he makes the intention. He makes Tawbah, he repents before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then he makes a vow in his heart that I would not leave the city of Makkah except that I shall place two silk shrouds on the walls of the Kaaba, honor it. And I will give seven golden coins, seven ashrafis, to every man, woman and child in Mecca. And I shall give every man, woman and child of Mecca silk pieces of cloth before I leave the city. So I will place two silk cloths, shrouds over the Kaaba, I will give seven ashrafis, golden coins, to each man and woman and child, and seven pieces of cloth made out of silk to each man and woman and child in the city of Mecca. As the alim, as the Jewish scholar was leaving him, and he had made this intention, he called him and he said, Look at me, Allah has cured me. Allah has healed me at this very instant. And I have made the intention of giving sadaqah to the people of Mecca. And that night, the shrouds of the Kaaba were prepared. The following morning, Tubba Himyari was the first man in history. He was the first man in history to place a shroud around the Kaaba. This is where the tradition of shrouding the Kaaba came from. 